after watching that intro you still don't know what we're talking about today, then congratulations, you live a much healthier life than me. Because if you've even glanced at the internet this week at all, you've probably been completely inundated with Linea Micro content. But the arrival of a new La Marzocca machine is essentially the coffee industry equivalent of a new baby in the family, which is fitting, as it's the smallest in the home line. And as the official La Marzocco stan account of YouTube, I do have a lot to say about this fresh but familiar edition. Starting out with a quick side-by-side -side comparison to its slightly larger sibling, the Linea Mini. Highlighting the Micra's differences, and of course its overall performance. And rounding it all out with why I think the arrival of the Micra may be signaling that the end is nigh for the Mini. As always, in the spirit of full disclosure, the folks at Lamarzoka Home sent me the Micra for review, without any expectations or guidelines of what I can and can't say, so all the thoughts and feelings displayed here are mine and mine alone. And with all that said, let's dig in. While sitting side by side with the Mini, the Micra's similarities are clear, but what they have in common goes much deeper than aesthetics, and their spec sheets read as if the Micra literally copied the Mini's homework. Both have dual boilers for simultaneous steaming and pulling, an integrated group head and PID temperature control for thermal stability, an internal rotary pump for smoother, more consistent pressure application, a hot water spout, a similar sized water reservoir, barista lights to put your extraction on stage, and even connected app compatibility for pre-brewing, pre-infusion, stats, and settings. But what truly sets the Micra apart are some small but seemingly meaningful details that really focus it down on the home espresso experience. For one, the size. Although not massively different, the Micra takes 3 inches off in height, 2 inches in width, 6 inches in depth, and 5 pounds in weight from its mini counterpart. The steam wand itself has been further insulated to avoid potential burns and become more home kitchen friendly. And lastly, the most interesting and wildly different update, the new convertible portafilter, which essentially is a modular design that allows you to swap from bottomless to single or dual spouts in a literal snap. But the jury is still out on how these plastic caps will hold up to heat and use over time. But there's even more to that decision than just pure convenience. According to Lamarzoko's designers, the removal of excess or unnecessary steel means the machine and its components heat up and reach a thermally stable point much quicker. And this includes the portafilter. When I tested this, the machine itself was ready to brew in about 5 minutes and steam in about 10. But the portafilter and basket was only slightly warmer than room temp at that point, so I say you still need to put in about 20 minutes or flush it with hot water from the group a couple of times to minimize its heat sink and reduce wait time. Now at this point in the nearly 100 year legacy of La Marzocco, I think talking about the performance starts to feel a little redundant, so I'm going to make this section short and sweet. When it comes to brewing, the Micro functions exactly like the Mini, and what that means is simply, consistently, and flawlessly. Just flip the switch, the pump ramps up, and the espresso flows. The espresso produced, although its quality does hinge on the user's experience and ability, is without question on the level of what you'd expect from a La Marzocco home or commercial machine. When it comes to steaming just like the brewing, the power is consistent, the steam is dry, and the quality of milk, although again hinging on the user's ability, can be silky, smooth, and latte art ready. Truly, there was only a few downsides that I noticed that fall within the realm of usability. One is the angled design of the steam wand that makes it difficult to use larger pitchers as it makes reaching the milk kind of awkward without having to work out the perfect angle. Also, the minimal headspace under the group, which was already tight on the mini, and as you likely expected, is even tighter on the micro, especially with a scale. And finally, the odd oversight of no manual temperature adjustment on the machine itself. You're stuck having to adjust the PID temperature only using the connected application. So no Bluetooth device, no control. So through my time with the Micro, I couldn't help but find myself wondering about the Mini's future. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't remember hearing anyone say, I like this, but can you just make it smaller? I guess I'm just a little confused as to where the Mini now fits in to the La Marzocco home lineup. The Micra, in my opinion, seems like the machine the Mini should have been from the start. 
advertised as bringing the cafe home, much like the Mini was during its introduction, plus having nearly the exact same build material, design, features, and functionality in a smaller package and for less money. So it just sort of confuses me as to why La Marzocco Home would build and sell both, because it seems very obvious to me that the Micro will be cannibalizing mini sales starting at day one. So all of this sort of just begs the question, why would La Marzocco Home do this to themselves? Because it doesn't seem like a very smart business move. And this is where my hot take comes into effect. And I think it's because they're planning, or at the very least toying, with the notion of killing the Mini. Now, I think this theory actually makes some sense, but for only one reason. Affordability. But not too affordable. And that's not to say $3,900 isn't a lot of money, but they're not trying to compete with the Gaja, the Breville, or the Sylvia. La Marzocco still wants to maintain their aspirational brand status. But the pricing of the Mini, which started at $4,500, has now found its way to just shy of six grand. So in order to sort of rein that in and have a more affordable entry-level option, they are in essence resetting the clock on mini pricing. By producing a different, but also very similar machine using a lot of existing components that are likely less expensive and less risky of an investment than they were when they launched the mini in 2015. And to be honest, I'm not mad about it. I think this is a smart business play. But beyond the extremely minor differences, the Micra is basically the same machine just without the NSF certification, which allows the Mini to be used in a commercial setting. As La Marzocco says, the Micra is truly a proper home espresso machine. And yeah, it may not have all the bells and whistles others have in the prosumer market and demand a higher premium for entry, but it's still a La Marzocco through and through. From its build to its brew, it's beautiful, it's consistent, and I like it, even though I think it's killing the Mini. But with all that said, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the Micra? Do you think it'll be a hit or a miss? Do you think it's intended to eventually replace the Mini? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.